Yo, this is Patrick from Guy in the Cube. In this video, I want to talk about a very serious topic, and that's data silos and how to prevent them from spreading throughout your organization. Stay tuned on how to find out. Okay, guys, this is a very, very serious topic. And you guys, I'm here to talk about these data silos. Some of you may remember data silos with Access and Excel back in the 80s and 90s and even, you know, a little bit in the 2000s. But when, t when Power BI came out, I thought we were getting away from it, but now I'm seeing them. They're just spreading. They're just spreading everywhere. Um, when I'm on phone calls, when I'm talking to people, you know, at users groups, they're saying how, you know, they're doing these things just to kind of silo data. If you feel that you're experiencing this or you see or you think that you're experiencing this in your organization, call 1-800-STOP-DATA-SILOS. It's flashing on the screen right now. If you don't want to use the phone, if you just want to email us, email us at stopdatasilos at guyinacube.com. Let's get ahead of this thing, okay? So for you guys that don't know what data silos are, you know how I like to do, the best way for me to show you is to what? Head over to my laptop. Hey, Kaylin, how's it going? Good to see you. Good to see you too. You know, we saw this report you made and... This one? Yeah, yeah. You like this one? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Nice. That moment you realize they don't really like it. We want to use it for our department, but we didn't know it could be a slight bit of change. Changes? This thing is great. They love it in the attendance department. Okay, look, let me drive. I do believe that Patrick's about to get schooled by his daughter. You, you want to sit in my chair? I want to show you your mistakes. Oh, my mistakes. Okay. All right. Sure. Sure, Kaylin. Yeah. Well, you know what? We think it's awesome. We just want to use it. We want to change a couple of things. Mm -hmm. So we want to place attendance with behaviors. Oh, that's right. You work in the like discipline department. Yeah, that's right. Okay. All right. Sure. I think I can do that, Kane. It will take me a couple of days. Well, you know, if you don't have time, you could just email it to me and I could get it done. So you work with Power BI? Well, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I guess. One. I, since day one, okay. So I guess I can email it over to you, the file. Maybe I'll see what right. what, what my timeline looks like. Yeah, Thanks, Kaylin. Will Patrick email Kaylin the Power BI desktop file and create another data silo? She asked me to email it to her because she wanted to do the work herself. Mm. If I email her a copy of this, then she has a copy, and I have these little buckets of the same data these little data silos all over the place and I'm definitely trying to avoid the data silos but what if I modify the data model and it's something she needs how does she get it hmm I guess I could send her the code and some oh too much work too much work not gonna do that um, so I could also just come here and copy it I guess I could do that hmm if I make a copy of it so that's a good idea. I'm going to make a copy. Oh, Patrick, you are so smart. So I'm going to make a copy of it and sit it. And now I can develop, remove all the other pages in the report, add just the stuff she wants. Oh, but I'm still in the same, I got the same problem because if I change something in one, now I'm maintaining two copies. I've essentially created my own data silos. Okay, that's not a good idea. So what are you going to do? All right, so let's delete this. All right, let's open up the desktop. I got an idea, right? If you want to, right, if you're savvy enough, you can go the AS route. So if you want to do that, you have this one central place. Instead of creating silos and silos of data, copies of PBIX files, email and PBIX files all over the place, you can actually, it's a good idea, use AS. But if you're not a subject matter expert, if you don't want to spend the time learning, actually everything that you already know is everything that you're doing in the desktop transfers directly over to tabular model so don't fret but if you don't want to do that right if you don't want to learn a new development environment you can absolutely use power bi as your development environment so what i would do is if i knew all this before i started developing i would have opened up the desktop used one file to do all my data modeling and then publish that file up to the power bi service because the Power BI desktop it can be used just for data modeling. It could be used for just visualizing. It could be used for both. It can be used for lots of things, right? Um, if I was ahead of the game, I would have just published it up and had one that was my data model and then used it to visualize against that data model. And since I didn't, right, I'm going to take this one that I've already created. 
I'm going to publish it to the Power BI service, right, with the data set. So now I'm going to kind of use it for two things, right? I'm going to use it for visualizing the attendance data, but for data modeling, a model that can be used throughout my organization. It's okay, right? And if I have some time, I may even go back and rebuild the incidents, I mean, the attendance reports in its own separate um, Power BI desktop and then delete all those and just use this as my data model. But e either way, right, either way. So now I have it, so it's published up, and then what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna open up a new desktop file and go and get my data from the Power BI service. This is really important, because the Power BI service is where that central repository of data, no more data silos, just one data model using the Power BI service. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it, and I remember the workspace where I published it. It was in Adam and Patrick, and then it was called Attendance, which is at the bottom of my list here. Go ahead and click to it, click load, and within a few seconds, I have that data model. The same data model that's in the other file, I have it. It belongs to me now, and now I can begin to create my reports and do things like that. And so she did want a row count of all the rows in that incident table. So what I'm gonna do is create a new measure, call it, um, just I'm gonna call it incidents, and then I'm just gonna count the rows in it, and then daily incident, just a little simple DAX, right? And then I'm gonna republish this. And once it's republished, let's go ahead and save. And it's gonna ask me to choose my workspace, maybe. Yep, just go ahead and select that one. Within a few seconds, it's gonna publish. Uh, hang on, let me replace. Yep, I know it's already there. It's gonna publish it out, and once it's pub published out, so this is my data model, kind of like SQL Server data tools, right? If I was modeling out my tabular model with data tools. Once it's published, then I can go over to my new file where I'm doing for attendance. So you can see right there, daily incidents. If I just click refresh, there's incidents. So anytime I create something, modify the model, shape it, transform it, do whatever I wanna do and publish it up, right? All I need to do is come to my new models. If I just open it, it should pick it up. If I click refresh, it'll pick up those updates and I could begin to build my reports and do everything I want, you know, just live connected to the Power BI service, the data set that's in the service. And I only have one, one, right? One data model. Oh, Patrick, you are so smart. You're such a great guy. Hey guys, what do you think? You like the videos? You got any comments, questions? Post them in the comments below. If this is your first time yeah. watching, make sure to subscribe to A Guy in a Cube. And if you like our video, give it a big thumbs up. From Adam, Kaylin, and Patrick, as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Deuces. Yeah, we <laughs> messed up. <laughs>